let's start seating, finding a neutral pelvis, a tall spine, closing the eyes, arriving fully here. So we're going to bring the thumbs and index fingers lightly together in a gesture we do often in the yoga practice. Sometimes we're not sure exactly why we do it. So I explain, you can have your palms facing down, allowing this to be a grounding seal of energy. A mudra is an energetic seal. It evokes specific archetypes or intentions. And for this one in particular, we will be open to connecting to higher consciousness, supreme consciousness, masculine energy, Shiva energy. So Shiva is considered to be the energy of the absolute from which everything comes from, to which everything goes back to. And Shiva sometimes has a very wild energy. So Shiva needs an organizing force, which is its counterpart, Shakti, creative energy, feminine energy. So for now, tuning in to being open to the idea of connecting to the absolute, connecting to vastness, to infinity, if you will. Begin to watch your breath coming in and out of the nose. Observing the expansion in the rib cage as you inhale followed by the softening, the release as you exhale. So as you breathe in, imagine you're breathing in the universe as you are. As you breathe out, it is the universe that breathes you. So we are connecting to this idea of being one with everything. Just by watching our breath and letting the mind become more steady, more present, letting the heart become open. Consciousness gesture with the hands, chin mudra. Just a few more breaths here, observing air coming in through the nose, breathing in the universe. Contract the lower abdominals to get empty, exhaling, allowing universe to breathe you. So observe how we are all connected. We're all breathing the same air, the same universe. And every time we exhale, there's a part of us that is being blended with the universe, where everything comes from, where everything goes back to. Now let's circle the arms, inhale, lift them up by the head, interlace fingers, press the palms skyward and take a deep breath, extending the arms up by the head, stretch out. And bend the elbows on the exhale, elbows out, relax the shoulders. And extend again, inhale, keeping the shoulders low, stretch out. Bend the elbows sideways on the exhale. We'll do it one more time. Inhale, stretch up, become aware of the space beyond the crown of your head. Exhale, bend the elbows out. And then inhale, once again, extend the arms. Now open them out. Exhale, interlacing hands behind the hips. 
As you extend the arms back, lift your chest, keep chin slightly down. Awareness of the space above the crown of the head, the area of the um, crown chakra, Sahasrara chakra. Sahasrara chakra representing spirituality, our connection to this higher power, to Shiva consciousness. Just one more breath. And as you release your hands down by the hips, touch the floor lightly. Inhale, lift the right arm up. Exhale, walk the left fingers away, side bend. We won't hold, we'll come back up. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower the hand, other side. Inhale, left arm up. Walk right fingers away, exhale, side stretch. Come to center, inhale. Exhale, lower your hand down. Rotate the shoulders up, back and down a few times. And then from here, join hands together at heart center. Close the eyes. And we'll take a moment to connect once more to the idea of the absolute, specifically in the Shiva form. Shiva, one of the three main gods in the Hindu trinity is considered to be the destroyer, the one that destroys things just so they can be rebuilt better, more harmoniously, so that there's movement and we're not stagnant with life. It encourages evolution. So we're connecting to Shiva's energy allowing for anything that is no longer working for us to get destroyed, to trust that we will rebuild things in a better way. And we'll honor the energy of Shiva by chanting, welcoming that power, Om Namah Shivaya. We'll chant it nine times. I will add a little melody to it, a melody that I learned in the Shivananda tradition. Very simple. So you can join me and chant this nine times. Inhale. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Welcoming the energy of the one that destroys things so they can be built in a better way. Thank you for your blessings, Lord Shiva. We're slowly transitioning onto child's pose, making our way onto the hands and knees.
stay with the vibrations of the chant, let them wash over you, already releasing the stuff that is non-serving, the stuff that is no longer benefiting you, helping you grow, helping you live this life to the fullest, anything that may be keeping you stuck. Shiva brings movement to life through the help of the organizing force of Shakti, creative power. Shiva is pure consciousness. It needs its counterpart Shakti in order to experience itself. As you continue to observe your breathing, walk your hands over to the right side. The head stays between the arms, relax the shoulders. We bow to the power of Lord Shiva. We trust that it is helping us grow, evolve, live better. Walk the opposite way, keeping the head between the arms. Observe the movement of the breath in the body, constantly interaction with the universe. Coming back to center, we're entering downward facing dog. Come onto your hands and knees, curl the toes and lift the hips up and back. Keep your head down and bend the knees one at a time, moving your hips from side to side. Stretching out. Enjoy the movement. And as you pause in center, keeping the head down, notice if there's any holding around the neck, around the shoulders. Then inhale, glide forward into a plank pose. Lower your knees to floor and move the hips around in circles. So breathing out any rigidity in the body, any unnecessary tightness or stress accumulated in the form of tension, let it all go. After moving in both directions, pause in center, hands underneath the shoulders, knees under hips. I'm gonna make a fist with my hands to give my wrists a break. Welcome to do that whenever you need a break. Lift your chest, inhale, look ahead. Exhale, squeeze the belly and round the spine, chin to chest. Lift the chest as you breathe in and continue to move according to your breath, very mindful. Notice if having chanted a little longer than we normally do in the beginning, has changed anything for you, if anything is different, if perhaps you feel more open, more connected to the idea of energetically being open to Shiva consciousness, to the idea of breathing in the universe every time you inhale and letting the universe breathe you every time you exhale. Just become aware of the power of chanting, the power of mudra, the power of intention. We'll finish exhaling completely and pause in a neutral spine. Extend the right leg back with the toes pointing down, left arm by the head. Maintain your hips equally high up, draw the low ribs in, press the inner right heel back and stay here with a smooth breathing. Just one more breath. Then lower down hand and knee, 
and other side, left leg extends back, toes pointing down, right arm by the head. Hips equally high. Soften face. The breathing is smooth. Constant interaction with the universe through the cycles of your breath. Just one more breath here. And slowly lower down, hand and knee. Now, let's extend the right leg back, look forward. And on the exhale, bring the knee to nose, round your back. Inhale, extend the leg again, shoulders down. Exhale, draw knee to nose. Two more times, inhale, open chest, extending the leg, and exhale, draw it in. Last time, inhale, open chest, exhale, draw it in. Now, this time, as you extend the right leg back, bend your knee, reach back with your left hand, and try catching your ankle. Yeah. Do what you can. If you can't really hold the ankle, you can just reach towards the foot. Keep your right shoulder back, looking ahead. Smoothly breathing, just one more breath. Then we'll re-extend the right leg, left arm by the head, take a breath, and then keep your leg straight, lower your toes to floor, left hand down on the shoulder. Move your left foot outside the mat like a kickstand as you turn your body right, reach your right arm up to ceiling and then over the head. Press the outside of your right foot down. Can you make a few circles with the right arm to free up the shoulder girdle? Yes. Be mindful of the left shoulder so it's not rolling forward. You're not putting pressure in that shoulder in a, a way that it may be causing harm. Be very mindful and then free up the body, your instrument here on this earth. We can pause with the right arm reaching overhead again for one breath here in a lateral stretch, a soft slight tuck of the tailbone, just elongate through the low back. And then looking at the ground, lower your right hand, lower your right knee. Reset tabletop position, fist with the hand if you're giving your wrist a break, left leg extended back, inhale, look forward. Exhale, draw knee to nose, round your back. Inhale, left leg back, look ahead. Exhale, squeeze in, two more. Inhale, open chest. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, last time. Exhale, draw in. Now we extend the leg, then we bend the knee, reach back with the right hand. Maintain your left shoulder back. As you look ahead, the neck is long. The breathing, is undisturbed, just like the presence of the absolute, still. From here, we can extend the leg again, reach the arm forward by the head, and then lower your left toes to the floor, right hand down on the shoulder, move the right foot outside the mat, turn the body left and reach the arm up to ceiling, and then overhead, side body stretch. Anchor down the outside of your left foot and make a few circles with the left arm. <sighs> Freeing up the shoulder girdle. Mindful of the right shoulder, not to strain it. And from here, we'll reach the arm overhead again. Take a nice breath, a slight tuck of the tailbone. Gazing down, lower the left hand, lower the left knee. Sit into child's pose. Sitting here, connecting to the ground beneath. And with the arms extended by the head, spreading the fingers wide. Come forward onto your hands and knees and then lower to your belly. Move your chest forward, lower all the way down. Lift up the chest, interlacing hands behind the hips with the opposite thumb on the outside. Extend the arms back. When we were seating, we did the clasping of the hands and now we reverse the thumb on the outside. Lift the hands off the hips, 
press the tops of the feet on the floor. Notice the back chain of muscles engaging. One more breath here. Then lower the forehead down, hands close to low ribs, curl the toes to push up, knees or plank, downward facing dog. Inhale, expanding with the universe. Exhale, breathing out what is not serving a purpose. Inhale, movement, evolution. Exhale, any stagnant energy. Lifting up the heels, breathe in. Breathe out to bend knees, look forward and step between the hands, come to a flat back, inhale. Fold over legs, bend knees on the exhale to roll up the spine, slowly standing up, shoulders down as you raise your arms. Namaskar, hands at heart. With the toes spread wide, find a point of focus and lift your heels off the floor to balance. Balancing without getting rigid. There's buoyancy in the body. There could be a soft bend in the knees. And we stay anchored, connected to the earth at the same time that we remember the vastness above. Connected to the absolute, aware of spirit while living this embodied life. Take one more breath here. And we slowly bring the heels back down for Surya Namaskar. Let's chant the Gayatri Mantra, yeah? So taking a moment, connecting to soul or power, honoring all that radiance, that life giving energy. Inhale together. Om Bhu Bhuva Svaha Katsavitur Varenyam Pargo Devasya Dimahi Diyoyona Prachodayat Om Shanti 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 Om Peace 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 We'll circle the arms like a big radiant sun all around. Inhale high. Bow to that energy, exhale, fold. Halfway up, look forward, inhale. Hands to floor, step or hop back, bend the elbows lower halfway or all the way down. Chaturanga, knees could be down. Lift the chest, extend the arms if you can for upward dog. Downward facing dog, all the way back. Inhale, expansion. Contract low belly, exhale, getting grounded. Inhale, lift up the heels. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Step between the hands, come to a flat back as you inhale. Full down, exhale, bend the knees. Roll up the spine, circle the arms. Inhale, reach up high. Bring the hands to heart in the gesture of Namaskar. We'll do it again, circle the arms. Inhale, upward Bahastasana. Bowing down. Uttanasana. Look forward, long neck, Ardha Uttanasana. Hands down, step or hop back, bend the elbows, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale with that consciousness of the universe coming in. And exhale, aware of what you're putting out back into the universe. Let the inhalation lift up the heels. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward, step or hop. Flatten the back, breathe in. Fold over legs, breathe out, bend the knees. Roll up the spine, circle wide, inhale, reach high. Exhale, namaskar. Now from the chest, reach up, inhale skyward. Reach forward, engaging your core, arms by the head the whole time on the way down. 
Step your right foot back, knee off the floor, stay on the ball of the foot as you raise your arms and find stability here. Let's open the arms, shoulder height out. Eagle, reaching forward, right arm crosses over left, bend the elbows, touching palms or hands to shoulders. Inhale, lift elbows. Exhale, softening shoulders. Try bending that back knee. Notice if that helps, lengthen the low back. And keeping navel towards spine, you may choose to re-extend the right leg or keep it bent. The left femur bone moving back into the pelvis. Smoothly breathing, we take one more breath here. Now interlacing the hands behind the hips. Once again, release your arms and reach back. Extending the arms, lower your right heel to floor, humble warrior, lift your chest. Exhale, bowing down, left shoulder inside of left knee. Extend the arms to sky as you look at the right foot. Keep the head down. Draw the outer left hip towards the right foot. Keep bending the front knee as we take another breath here in the humble warrior. Then reaching chest forward, lower hands under shoulders, come back on the ball of the right foot, lunge. Right hand stays down, you can lower the knee if you like, look over the left shoulder, hand to hip, then extend your arm up for a twist. Draw the shoulder heads back, the right knee could be down or up. The waist is long on the left side. The breathing is smooth, it never changes. We take one more breath here. We'll exhale to bring the left hand back down to the floor. Walk hands over to the right edge of the mat, feet parallel and legs straight. And then fold between the legs, release your head down for a moment. Stay upside down. Any arm hand position you like, you can hold on to your elbows or forearms. You can again interlace your hands behind your back. There are so many variations here. You can create your own. As you stay upside down, notice the quality of the pose. How does it affect you? Forward bends tend to be calming and induce a state of introspection. What is your experience? What does it do for you right now? We're coming out of Prasarita Padottanasana by bringing the hands to the floor, lightly touching the floor. Reach your chest forward, breathe in. Now, can you bend, or sorry, first turn the right toes to the right, and then bend the right knee and sit close to your right heel, as close to the heel as possible. The heel can lift off the floor. Then lift your chest and turn the left toes to point up. Balance here, try bringing the hands at heart. Yeah, does that make sense? So as you stay here, keeping the little fingers and thumbs together, separate the three middle fingers in the lotus flower gesture. Relax your shoulders. Breathing, the lotus that symbolizes an awakened mind, spirituality, connection to the divine. Take one more breath, an awakened heart. Close the lotus flower, Padma Mudra. Bring your hands to floor and we turn to lunge at the front of the mat, mindfully walking all the way back into a lunge position. Step into plank, inhale, plank. Lower the knees, sit back into child's pose, balasana, stay for a breath. Inhale, expansion. Getting grounded, exhale fully. Come forward onto the hands and knees, breathe in. Move chest past fingers, bend the elbows, lower halfway down, breathe out. 
Lift the chest, inhale, navel into spine. Exhale, downward facing dog all the way back. A full breath in, expanding. Stay as you exhale, get empty. Lift up the heels as you inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Step or hop between the hands, flatten the back, inhale. Fall down, exhale, bend the knees. Let's roll up, circle the arms, inhale, reach high. Exhale, hands at heart. Other side, same sequence. Inhale, lifting the arms up skyward. Reach forward with control. Bow down, folding over your legs. Step your left foot back, stay on the ball of the foot and raise the arms into a modified lunge. Opening the arms out. Reaching forward, the left arm crosses over. Bend the elbows, touch palms, Garuda Asana. Lift the elbows. Soften the shoulders. Right femur bone drawing back into the pelvis. Soften the outer hip. A small bend in the back knee can be helpful. Notice what it does for you. If it helps you, keeping it straight or bent is your choice. Stay present here just for another breath in this variation of the warrior lunge with eagle arms. And as we release the arms of Garuda, interlace hands behind the hips, placing the left heel on the floor, extend the arms, lift chest, right shoulder inside of right knee, humble warrior. Look at the back foot, extend the arms up. Keep anchoring the back foot down. Humble warrior, present, aware. From here, we reach the chest forward, hands down. Come back to the ball of the foot, maybe lower the knee. As you bring your right hand to hip, gaze over shoulder, extend the right arm up. Shoulder heads back, extending the leg is an option. Waist is long on the right side. Breathing mindfully, knowing that through this different shapes and intention to breathe and be present, we are clearing energetic channels, releasing toxins, releasing impurities in all levels. From here, lower the right hand down. Walk your hands to the left edge of the mat. Feet parallel, legs straight. Fold between the legs, release the head. One position that I like for the hands here is to interlace them behind the head, letting them touch the head, bringing the elbows close together so there's very soft pressure against temples. Then I really let the shoulders, the neck relax. And I stay upside down. And this encourages pratyahara, which is the withdrawal of external stimulation or the withdrawal of sensory experiences, bringing all your attention within. No external experiences. And releasing the hands down, reach the chest forward, turn the left toes out a bit. As you bend the left knee, sit close to the left heel, lift the right toes to point up, lift the chest. Find balance, and it's okay if you need to be here, right? You modify as you need. Now, try bringing the hands together for Padma Mudra, the lotus flower gesture, separating the three middle fingers. Connecting to the power of the mudra, the power of the lotus flower that grows from mud, reaching up for light and blossoming as a symbol of spiritual awakening, an awakening that is very rooted in darkness. 
So we honor darkness and light, two sides of the same coin. Opposite forces, opposite energies, always complementing one another. Take another breath here. Closing Padma Mudra, hands down. Carefully walk back forward into that same lunge where we started. Step the right foot back into plank, one breath. Both knees down, sit back, child's pose. Stay in child's pose, inhale expansion. Stay exhaling fully. Come forward onto the hands and knees. Chest forward, bend the elbows, lower halfway down. Extend the arms, upward dog with the knees down or up. Downward facing dog, all the way back. Inhale to expand. Exhale to stay here. Bend the knees, look forward, step or hop. Flatten the back as you inhale. Fold down, exhale, bend the knees and roll up. Circle the arms, inhale, reach up high. Exhale, namaskar. Let's balance. Find a focal point, a simple tree pose to begin. Lower the arms, mountain. All the way to the left foot, bend the right knee, point it out, foot up the leg. Hands together. Lift chest. So the sternum is lifting up towards the thumbs. And maybe you can connect to your heart beating. Notice the rhythm of your heart beating right now. That pulsation of life. Connect to that. Shiva and Shakti meeting at the heart together to create this beautiful life that we live. Consciousness manifesting itself in so many different forms, including our own being in this world. Just one more breath. Bring that right knee forward, lower the foot down, reground. Other side, left knee bends, we open, we lift. Join hands. Anchor and lift. Tone in lower abdominals. And again, connect to the rhythm of your heart. Grateful for this life, for this body, for this opportunity to practice yoga and remember who we are in nature, in, in our true innermost nature, in essence. That underlying presence that never changes. From here, we can bring the knee back forward, lower the foot down. And one more balancing pose that I thought we could do today is the Shiva Nataraj form, the cosmic dancer form. So we release the arms down. We bend the right knee again, and now we bring it close to, or bring the foot close to the right hip. We hold it there. You can stay here or you can hold the front of the ankle, left arm up by the head. Once again, Index and thumb lightly touching. We send the foot back, chest forward. Try keeping your left arm by the head. So in the Natarajasana pose, we are reminded of this form of Shiva called Nataraj, the cosmic dancer. The one that flows through life, through the ups and downs with so much grace, doesn't get caught up 
in the dramas of life, flows through everything like a dancer. Tone in low belly. Take another breath here. Come back to center and lower down. Reground, let's do the other side. Left knee bends, we lift the foot up close to the hip. Once you are steady here, holding the front of the ankle, right arm up, index and thumb lightly touching, left foot back. Tone in low belly and maintain your breathing smooth. So see, there are many forms of Shiva, right? I mentioned uh, the destroyer, one of the aspects of Shiva. And now we're exploring a different aspect, the dancer. But if we go back to the essence of Shiva, it's consciousness, the absolute, formless. So it takes many forms but it's formless in essence. One more breath. Come back up, lower the foot, reground. We're going to do some hip openers, but we'll do it lying down, okay? Circle the arms, inhale, reach up high. Folding down, exhale, bow. Inhale, halfway up. Bend the knees to sit up, sit down, and then extend your legs forward. Let's come down together for a hip opening and twisting. Point the toes, big toes close together, reach the arms forward, shoulder height, deep breath. Contract the belly and lower yourself slowly, slowly, slowly. The head will come down less. And once your head is on the floor, hug in your knees, relax your back. Taking a moment here to become aware of the breath once again, that idea of breathing in the universe and letting the universe breathe you. As you inhale, allow your belly to expand, your legs can move forward a little bit to give space for your belly. As you exhale, contract the belly, let the knees come closer to the chest. Just so again, one more time, inhaling the belly rises, the knees can move away from the chest. Exhale, contract the belly, knees into chest. Good. Then bring your feet to the floor, hip distance apart, mat distance, wider than hips, mat distance. If you have something to support your head, your neck, place them under your head now. Open the arms out, shoulder height, shoulder blades down the back. Take a breath in center. Take your time. And on the exhale, knees fall to the right, head turns left. Back to center, breathing in. Breathe out, knees left, head right. Center, inhale, exhale, knees right, head left. Inhale up, exhale, knees left, head right. Inhale up again, twist once again, exhale. Inhale up, last one, exhale, twist. Inhale, center, pause. Bring your feet hip distance now. Hug your right knee into your chest and straighten the left leg all the way down. Extend the right arm out. Use the left hand to guide your right knee across, twisting with the right hip away from shoulder. Turn your head right. Keep that waist long on the right side. Outer right hip away from armpit. Aware of your breath. Aware of the pulsation of life running through you. We connect you to the heartbeat before. 
can you go even subtler and experience life pulsating through the entire body? Prana, vitality moving through you. Soften into this moment. It's our last breath here in the twist. Finishing the exhalation, we'll bring the knee back up and hug it into chest. Now draw the left knee up, lower the right foot to floor and extend the leg down. Left arm reaches out. And we bring this knee across, turning the head left. Soften the shoulder. Lots of space between the armpit and the left outer hip. And we keep practicing, connecting to that awareness. that remembrance of the part of us that never changes, that is not affected by the ups and downs of life. more breaths here without any rush to get anywhere. And we'll slowly finish the exhale and then bring the knee up, hug it in. Both knees can be up now. Now place your hands on the kneecaps, patella. Move the knees forward away from chest and notice the sacrum heavier onto the floor. Notice what that does for your back. If it allows your spine to be more neutral. Happy baby will be our last shape before Shavasana. So bring the knees into the armpits, soles of the feet up. Grab the outer edges of the feet. Press down on your feet. And maintaining the sacrum heavy, feel free to stay still or walk around. Returning to happy baby to being a blissful, happy child. Remembering Shiva consciousness, where everything comes from, where everything goes back to. Releasing the feet down, preparing for final rest, Shavasana. So take your time, put on extra layers, get cozy. I will keep track of time. Yes, no rush. Lovely. Adjust your shoulder blades down the back, once you're down, let the palms face up. Open and receptive to healing and transformation without having to do anything, react to anything at all. Now is a time for deep 
surrender and trust. And in the trust we soften. We soften at the level of the physical body first, Anamaya Kosha. And as we soften the physical body, we notice all the other layers softening as well. Tanamaya Kosha, Manumaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha. The vital body, the mental body, the level of the higher wisdom beyond the ego and the eternal bliss. So notice now the physical body at ease. All the toes relaxed, the ankles, both feet relaxed. The legs, knees, hips, the pelvis, the belly, rib cage, chest, the whole back. Shoulders both arms, elbows and wrists, the hands, all the fingers, throat, neck, the whole mouth, tongue is relaxed, gum, jaw, cheeks, temples, ears, eyes, nose, center of the eyebrows, forehead, crown, back of the head, the brain is relaxed. Resting in pure awareness. Any sense of separation begins to fade. At the level of Ananda Maya Kosha, there's an experience of oneness. There's the understanding that our true nature is unchanging. It's forever, it's pure, it's free. Staying connected and aware, we begin to move the hands and the feet, circling the ankles and wrists, and stretching out, aware of the gift of this body that holds our spirit. Drawing the knees up. Making our way to seating by rolling over to one side. Mm -hmm. 
And then finding a tall spine again, like we began. Index and thumbs join together. The palms can also be facing up in a receptive gesture of consciousness. Dhyana mudra or chin mudra, consciousness, gesture, higher wisdom, gesture. Really, it all goes back to the connection to spirit, Shiva consciousness, higher wisdom, the absolute, unchanging, always there underlying everything. Notice the connection to that still part of you, full of silence, peace. To close the practice, we'll join the hands back together. Anjali Mudra. Om Namah Shivaya. We bow to Lord Shiva. We remember our true essence and we trust life. Finishing to the sound of Om together. Inhale. Oh. Namaste.